Welcome to the instructions video for my budget template. Once you open the PDF file, you can access the template and the instructions video by clicking on the corresponding button. Before trying to access the template, make sure you're logged in your Google account and that you have space on your Google Drive. Otherwise, you will get errors if you try saving the file before doing this. When the file opens, in the upper right corner, you have to click on the button Use Template. This should open an editable file. In case you are still in the read-only version, meaning you can't make any edits to the file, make a copy of the file. To do this, click on File, make a copy, and rename the file however you'd like. Finally, click Make a Copy. In this first sheet, you will be able to access the instructions video you are watching now. This is also the place to choose the currency for the entire template by clicking on the little arrow. In case you do not see your currency in the list, click on the small pencil at the bottom and on the right hand side, scroll down and click Add another item. Add the symbol for your currency and click Done. Afterwards, you will be able to find your currency at the bottom of the drop-down list. You also have the option to highlight the cells where you can enter data. This is super helpful if you have just started using the template to avoid deleting any important formulas embedded in the spreadsheet. If you choose this option, all of the editable cells will be highlighted in a light purple color. Now it's time to add all of the categories you'd like to budget for. These categories will automatically appear in the budget template. If at some point you need to add additional categories, refer back to the sheet to do so. Don't delete or add additional categories on the monthly tabs. For income, you can add 12 categories, for bills and expenses, 30 categories, for savings and debt, 20 categories, and for investments, 11 categories. Now let's head to the budget template sheet. In the overview table, write down the year, choose on which day the month begins and on which day the week starts. Choosing the day of the beginning of the month is especially beneficial for those receiving their paycheck before or after the first day of the month. This means that you can start your budgeting month when you receive your first paycheck. In the accounts table, write down all the accounts you use on a daily basis for your transactions. Keep in mind that when writing the starting balance for a credit card, write it with a minus sign. I know it seems counterintuitive as the balance on your credit card appears without a minus sign, but this is necessary so the budget template can analyze your transactions properly. If you'd like your existing balance to roll over for a particular account, tick the box. Rollover means that your starting balance for the account will be added to your total budget and spending allowance. If you choose not to roll over any of your accounts, your budget and spending allowance will 100% depend on your expected and actual income respectively. In the income table, you can opt to add your due days for your income categories. These will automatically be reflected in the mini calendar in a gray color. Afterwards, add your expected income for the month, which will automatically increase how much you have left to budget. In the bills table, you can also opt to add your due days, which will be reflected in the calendar in a pastel orange color so you don't accidentally miss them. Next, choose which type each category fits into, either something you need, something you want, or you're saving for your future. Lastly, add your budget for each category. The main difference between bills and expenses is that for bills you pay the exact same amount periodically, but expenses are variable. Now repeat the same steps for expenses, savings, investments, and debt. And remember that for debt you can also opt to add your due days, which will be reflected in the calendar. In the summary table, you can easily see how much you have budgeted for each type, how much you have spent realistically, and how much you have left to budget based on the ratio. The ratio is automatically set to 50-30-20, but you can switch it up to fit your lifestyle. Let's assume we want 70% of our income to be allocated to needs, 20% to wants, and 10% to savings. The left to budget column is recalculated and now we can see there is a cell that is highlighted in a light yellow color. This means that by using this ratio, we have allocated too much to the savings type. Now that you know how this table works, I will go back to the 50-30-20 ratio. As we are now done with the budgeting part, let's switch the charts from budget view to actual spending view. As a reminder, your spending allowance depends on your actual income and the accounts you have chosen to roll over. All of your actual transactions have to be added in the transactions table. You can choose a transaction date by double clicking on the cell or by writing the date manually if you are using the template on your phone or tablet. 
Next, add the amount, choose the category from the drop-down list, the name from the drop-down list, and the account used for the payment. You can also add notes next to your transactions. Something important to remember is to always write all of the numbers with a period separator instead of a comma. For example, in my case, I type on my keyboard 110.27 instead of 110,27. If you use a comma, the analysis formulas will not understand it as a number, but instead as a text, and you will get errors. Once you have paid for your bills and debt, you can tick the boxes and they will strike through. If you want to make any transfers between your personal accounts, use a transfers table. In my fictional case, we used credit cards and I'd like to pay them off in full this month. First, I check their outstanding balance in the accounts table. Afterwards, I head to the transfers table where I choose which account I will use to pay them off. Write down the amount and select which credit card is going to receive it. That's it. In the accounts table, we can now see that the balance for the checking account has decreased, whilst our credit cards are paid off in full. When you are ready to start your budget for the next month, you'll notice that all of your data except for the actual transactions have been sourced from the previous month. So you don't need to start everything from scratch and you can easily make edits as needed. If we take a look at the year in review tab, we can see that all the actual data for January has already been added. The data here will automatically update based on what you input on each monthly tab. The charts at the top will show the total amounts per month for all the main categories. Just so you know, your annual net worth here is calculated by adding income, savings and investments, but subtracting expenses, bills and debt payments. If we scroll down a bit, we'll see a more in-depth analysis for each category. My main goal when creating this template was so it's as easy to use as possible. So I hope you love it as much as I do and you reach all of your financial goals you have set for yourself.